My name is Laszlo Barda. In this short intro, I would like to give you a quick introspection in the bright, and also in the dark side of the life of shepherd dogs. These days we tend to idealize life as a whole, but life like an idol, is an ideology and something fake. Expecting or demanding from life to be an endless idol, loses the full spectrum of it. Impoverishing, and in long term degenerating it. We tend to think, that we know better what life is, than life itself. Ignorance causes arrogance. In this video I will present the bright side of the shepherd dog's life. These four months puppies was bred by me in 2015. Those grown-up dogs you just have seen in the intro, are their uncles, who were born in 2012 in my kennel. The puppy's mother is one of my females bred by me. Their father is a fight line Sarplanunak imported in Hungary, from Balkan, Restelica. It was chosen for mating primarily because of its exceptional anatomical structure, but I was also very curious. How first generation mixtures of fighting dogs and real shepherd dogs can work in their original environment and mission. Not even the toughest, roughest shepherd dog can hurt livestock. In their puppyhood they can't even play with the litters of farm animals, because the game can go rough at any time, and often there are no people nearby to stop it. Just walking. And walking. And walking. Keep walking. Such young dogs are not actually working yet. It is enough to be able to follow the flock all day long, and watch and learn the adults in different situations. I find very important furthermore, that shepherd dogs to look so much like sheep, as much as possible. Why? Because wolves often even during the day attack the flock from ambush. In such cases, they try to assess remotely where the dogs are at that time. Although the color vision of wolves is underdeveloped compared to humans, but tonal differences are well perceived. Notice how much better it stands out that adult white dog of the sheep like these light brown puppies. Therefore the better blends the color tone of dogs with that of sheep the harder is to distinguish dogs from sheep from a distance. This is unfavorable for wolves, who are trying to rob the herd where there is no dog nearby. Here a herd is accompanied by an average of five, six adult dogs in daytime on the pasture. This number of dogs cannot surround tightly the flock which is constantly in motion and spread out in the pasture.
taking some rest, giving respect, The shepherd dogs of this region are lucky with regard to water. They often find small mountain streams where they can drink. Their steppe counterparts are less likely to access water. Refreshed by the cold water, and the cool of the shadows, they get in the mood for a little game, that would be nothing else, than a fighting game. Observe how insistent he tries to pull down his sister by her tail. Perhaps and in part because of this the habit of tail cropping may have developed in some areas, because shepherds have observed dogs, not just puppies, often pulling each other down by their tails. Maybe wolves also use this catch when more of them attack a dog. But I don't like that habit. On the one hand, it impairs the dog's movement coordination somewhat. On the other hand, and this is more important, it deprives the dog of a very important metacommunication tool. I love filming as they blend into the fall and flock environment. Just like camouflaged soldiers. What they are as well. How aware they are here and now to their environment. I have also observed in adult dogs too, that they are particularly attentive at certain times or perhaps in places. Yet nothing special can be perceived with human sense organs. And even in half an hour or one miles away, they get much more relaxed. As a person, no change in the environment can be felt, yet their behavior changes. Would some slight smell strike their noses from a predator lurking nearby? Or have it visited the place before and it can still smell it here and there? Who knows? For hours, for days, they have nothing to do but accompany the flock. That's what it looks like to a layman who easily believes he's seen everything. He might think that most large dogs may be able to do this. But that's just the appearance. It is not the same even how the escort it goes. Not to mention that many dogs are no longer able to follow the flock all day long. Either their musculoskeletal system is weak, or they can't stand the heat, the thirst, or simply are lazy. Many dogs today are too voracious, 
preferring to go for mouse catching or hunting. Others would chasing, even hurting the lambs. Others would fight each other. Still others, facing with predators, they are chasing them away so far, that the flock remains unprotected for hours. Still others attack the predator so carelessly that they perish. Still others would run away from predators, or just barking at them from a distance. A Hungarian academic dog ethologist wrote, or maybe just quoted, that behavior is what can be observed. Yet it is also behavior that may not be observed. What doesn't happen can be just as important as what happens. Like silence in music, immobility in movies. There is something that is not revealed from direct observation, but from the comparison of observations. What requires serious field experience. Those who perform contrived experiments with isolated dogs or dog owner pairs in their urban air-conditioned laboratories, not only lose a lot of information and knowledge, but also miss the essence of the dog. Because they fail to observe and learn the dogs for a long time and thoroughly in a complex, organic and close to nature pack environment, where they receive enormous physical and psychical strain from time to time. Only then could interpretation and understanding follow. Because dogs are like human beings. They are basically pack animals and only in a really difficult situation it becomes clear. Who? Or what they really are. Ignoring this evidence is in the scholar dog researches, turns that activity into in a bad sense harmless one, at the expense of taxpayers. Tired. Still aware. And ready to move on. Those either can't understand dogs, who think that by randomly letting together a few dogs collected from some owners or from a shelter, everything is ready to start a representative study of the dog's ethology. It would be like gathering the first half a dozen people just coming from the streets of a big city ghetto and saying, they represent humanity. By keeping them together and observing, we can learn what humanity is like. The egalitarian ideology makes us blind to the most simple evidences of the nature, life, and history. And pushes us to build forward this ideology up to the most ridiculously oversimplified thoughtless basics. Literally everything is welcome, what strengthens this ideology. It is thought-provoking in our age, that we are still don't thinking. Said Martin Heidegger, the German philosopher.